Hey everybody, thanks for coming by and watching another video. Uh, today I thought I would maybe expand a little bit on some of the stuff that I was talking about yesterday. Uh, so today this one you see I'm um, doing an eternal witness and I have some blue tape on, on there this time. Um, what this is for is for masking out or to help save in the cleanup process. So I just use some painter's tape and I'll um, cut those slivers to make it fit the space that I need to mask out, much like using frets uh, if anybody else is familiar with airbrushing or, or even masking fluid if you're familiar with watercolor painting. Um, just make it so that you can paint right over top of stuff and take it off when you're done and there's nothing underneath. Now there is a little bit of uh, stuff along the edges that I will go back and clean up and you'll see that in a little bit. But for the most part, this helps speed up the process a lot. It makes it makes it a lot um, easier to to plan where things go. So this, again, the first layer here is I, I use white. Some people will use gray. Some people say put down a base coat of your of the primary color of the composition that you're going to be working with. I like white. White just gives me a neutral start starting point. Keeps the colors that I mix true. Um, if I want green, I want it to show up green. I don't want it to, to show up a dull green. Or it also helps with the amount of layers that you'll put on because the darker, or the darker color that you put down for your primer, um, you have to apply that many more layers of color um, in your painting in order to make those those colors become vibrant and pop. So now because now you're not fighting on with the transparency of the color to cover up your primer. So I use white. Um, I mix my, my, I talked a little bit in the last video about uh, color matching. So one of the ways that I color match is I, I work in layers. So I will start with, I don't know, something, something, something that's close to what I want to get, not necessarily the exact color. Because as you build these things in layers, you'll some of these other color variants will show through, and that's exactly what you want. Because nothing in nature is one solid, non-variant tone. You're going to have shades and hues and everything inside inside these different colors and everything that you see. So I'll start lighter, and I'll work darker. In, in laying down these these color values. Uh, so here's a good example of that is I, I started with this reddish brown um, to to come in here and start working on this uh, organic piece, this vine. And you'll see as the video goes along, I start adding other colors to it. It gets more muted, um, shadows start coming in, um, the values start popping in. By the time it's all done, it matches the rest of the vine. And you'll also notice, like I mentioned last video, that I'm painting right over top of the, of the original art. And I'm doing this to help incorporate the new artwork that I'm putting in. So that way it looks more seamless. Not just, I, I painted up to the border and that's where my work ends and that's where the original artist work begins. The idea here is to try to, be, to make it a seamless Piece. One of the other challenges that you'll that you'll find in, in when you're extending artwork on, on altered cards like this is trying to figure out what the original artist had in mind that's going outside of these borders. <clears throat> Sometimes you just can't tell. You can't tell what the image is, what it's supposed to be, what, what it's going to be represented. Everybody may have an idea, their own opinion, and that's fine. <clears throat> but as an artist, you need to have the, the vision for what this thing is going to be. <clears throat> so this part right here, for example, kind of appears it might be a bridge, a wood slatted bridge. It could be a vine. 
It could be a vine. It could be any any organic or man-made structure. No idea. So I'm just making a choice. Okay, I'm going to make it a man-made structure. So you'll see as I go along here, I go ahead and keep on incorporating those horizontal slats and uh, and let those shadows and, and textures kind of come through and and let that be what that is. Um, the the ground in the for in the foreground, for example, there's some objects on there on the ground. You can't really tell what they are. You might suspect maybe it's a, a carcass of an animal. It, it could be uh, some old armor. I, no idea. I I really had no clue. So what I did, I used uh, the the sun beams that are coming through in the original art, and I made that more of a. Uh, I don't know, a, 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 a steamy kind of uh, energy that's erupting from the ground kind of thing. And you'll, you'll see that uh, here in a, in a little bit uh, as, the, as, I, as the foreground comes into play. Um, now, I didn't have that intention when I went into it. Uh, it's just one of these things that I just let the art do its thing. It, it, I told you before in other, in other videos, I let the art just kind of tell me what it wants to do, or the paint tell me what it wants to do, and I work with that. I work around the paint. I'm its tool. So as you're going through here, make sure I keep my paint really, really thin. You probably saw this a little bit ago. It started to run down that tree trunk a little bit. I keep my paint really diluted, and I'll go over and over and over in layers. And again, that's how you get that depth. That's how you that's how you get um, the, the the better color matching when you're using a variety of colors. Um, you don't want to go too wet, though. Uh, a lot of times, I found that because you use if you use a an air brush to go ahead and put your primer down, this with too much water will release. From the background and you'll start sheeting away so if you start putting if your paint that you're putting on on top of the primer is too wet you start creating holes in the primer and the original card art will show through so and maybe it's different for different paints i use liquitex ink so it's an acrylic ink so you get all the benefits of ink and you get all the benefits of acrylic paint and what I mean by that is ink has is high pigmented and it goes in and it will actually traditional ink like, uh, like an India ink it will lay down on top and it actually stain your stain your canvas or paper or what have you uh, the acrylic stuff with a wet toothpick you can just scrape it off you wouldn't be able to do that with traditional ink so you get you get the best of both worlds. You get uh, high pigmentation uh, and uh, and the high viscosity. Uh, so you can run it through your your airbrush if you like, and you've got the ability to start over if you really need to. You can just get this whole thing wet and just wipe it off, and it and it'll, for the most part it will come off. There are some colors that um, that doesn't work as well with. Um, it'll it'll. It will come closer to staining the surface, but for the most part, these will all come off if you really wanted it to come off. That's why I seal it at the end. So here's where I was talking about in the foreground, where I I wanted to to make it more of a steamy eruption from coming from the ground um, versus sunbeams in the coming down through the trees. Um, just my little take on it. Uh, you can see over on the, on the left hand side in the background where the sunbeams came through I just kind of let it evolve into that misty trail and then here in the front I'm adding contrast uh, to that to that light ground in order to to make it feel more like an illuminated uh, or, or a source of illumination rather so where this bright scene is coming through through the ground. I like to use splatters. Um, I'll go on there. I'll just I'll just throw some some ink down and clean up spots where I don't want it to be. And it, I like the organic feel of it. It's just just go where you want to go. Add some interest.
And so here, uh, in, in the last video too, I talked about depth and, and how things take on the color of the environment that it's in the further back that it goes. And you notice I stuck an airbrush over top of some of the stuff that's more in the background and it, it pushed the contrast out of those objects and which, which pushed them back into the environment. That's, that's, that's pretty much what I was talking about. It's just the, the, the further back things are, the less contrast it's going to have, the, the more that it takes on the color of the environment. So to push things back, that's, that's what you do. You just put it in like you normally would and then just airbrush right over top of it. And I don't want to say make it disappear, but you're, you're pushing it back. So ultimately you are. And then I like to bottom off my my altars with, uh, with black on the bottom. I don't like to put a whole lot of detail on the bottom of the card. You're holding the card. Your thumb and hand is down there at the bottom. Any extra detail that I would put down there, chances are it's going to be lost. Uh, you're never going to see it because you're, you're holding it. It's in your hand. When you're appreciating that card, it's in your hand. When it's down on the table, your opponent's not really appreciating it. It's not being distracting. And if it is being distracting, though, then you can probably... Uh, get in trouble for with with a head judge if your if your card is too too awkward too distracting, uh, which leads to other rules. The uh, the picture on the card it should be recognizable. Um, it's for the most part that's why I, I tend to do extensions rather than um, art changes. I will do art changes. I have done art changes, but. Those tend to be more questionable in tournament legality because the, your opponent can't just look across the table and recognize what card is in play. Um, so, word of caution when you're deciding what to how to alter your card. So check out our Patreon page. Link is up there at the top, patreoncom girl and follow us on Instagram. The Stump Project. Uh, we're on Twitter too, Stump Project. Um, I hope that you liked this video. I hope you got a little bit more out of it. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want to see. Uh, let's start a conversation, get things going. Um, I can make a, another video if there's a lot of questions. I can make another video to answer some questions. I hope that, that this video and the last one answered a lot of your questions regarding how I do alters, some of the tools that I use, and the techniques that I do. So I hope you guys have a great day, and keep watching.